Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. This is the midweek edition. Today is October 13, 2021. After a few consecutive down days, the S&P 500 finally got a reversal day. So we're going to take a look at the uh, S&P 500 and some of the internal. Then we're quickly going to take a look at some of the stock that I posted on Twitter today and see what are some of the trade opportunity in the coming days. So stay tuned. Let's start off with this daily S&P 500 chart. This is one of the patterns that the market participants have been watching, right? We all saw this. This is one of these, uh, the wedge. Everybody was looking for this wedge to break down. And then uh, look, everybody is looking for this big crash, right? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I think they are too optimistic about the big crash. Yes, we are seeing a pullback. And also, I put up another price pattern that I have. But it's not going to be on this video. It's in the weekly video. If you want to take a look at that, then go ahead and check out my weekly video that I just posted last weekend. And I have the link in the uh, description below. So you can see there is, is also a price channel pattern. But right now, what, are, what we're really interested in is this trend line here and this lower high and these lower low. We're going to be watching will this reverse back down and continue to make another new lower low or would it be able to break this trend line and start trying to put in a higher high to reverse this and essentially getting something like this coming back up and possibly come up and test the high remember now we still have that growback uh, all-time high from the e-mini S&P 500 that need to be taken out and to make that legitimate Okay, so there is still that possibility for the S&P 500 to come up to make a new all-time high. And also when we look at the internal, you will see why this is only a pullback. It's not even going to be a correction. So anybody that's talking about crash, it's a bunch of BS, right? So let's go and take a look at the internals. All right, starting with the VIX here. We see the VIX uh, still below this 20 level. It's sitting at 18.64 today. And so is the uh, put call ratio. It's down at 0.59 now. Remember a few days ago on the weekend video, we were talking about somewhere around up at that 0 0.69, 0 0.7 area, right? So once it coming down to this 0.59 and get down to 0.5, that means the market participant is putting back risk and, and they are taking on risk once again. And right now below 20, they are certainly getting a little bit more uh, complacent, less fearful. And it was uh, up here when it was up at the uh, you know 20 uh, 25 area 26 area about a couple of weeks ago, and here looking at the last couple of days, the up down volume also tell us a, a little clue about what to expect. Uh, you see that we saw a uh, positive divergence between the up down volume and the S and P 500 yesterday. But uh, yesterday we had a uh, the up down volume ratio was actually positive 1.2. I mean, uh, there were 1.2 times more up volume than down volume, but we also have a negative close on the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has to close down with a loss. And also in addition to that, we also saw that last Friday. So, uh, so on last Friday, we also saw a uh, divergence there, right? Okay, we have a, a positive up-down volume ratio but with a negative close on the S&P 500. But again, you look at the uh, advanced decline. Yesterday, the advanced decline was also positive by 634. In other words, 634 more advancing issue than declining issue, and the uh, S&P 500 was down. Today, it has uh, 774 more advancing issue than declining issue. And notice this uh, little bit of a hammer spinning top of a candle. All right, so we're going to take a look at that a little bit more, and I'll show you some of the level. I was watching on the E mini S and P 500, and why when I put out a tweet saying that I watch for a bounce, and also looking at the New York Stock Exchange new high, new low. As you can see throughout this uh, decline here, we saw all you know the uh, new high outnumbered the new low on all of these days, while the uh, S and P 500 was pulling back. Okay, so that's a little bit of a positive sign, although it's not a big number, a huge number of new high but all in all it was positive and here's the tail of the ad line from the new york stock exchange look at that 
Right, right now, we're basically seeing a positive divergence. That's the S&P 500. It's closed with a lower high. But look at that, uh, you know, right here, the AD line actually making a higher high. So we are seeing a divergence here, a positive divergence. And that is why that we do not view that this market is ready to crash. Okay, although we might still get a little bit of a pullback, but I think there is a turnaround coming and be careful of chasing after the short. I think it might be a little bit late to go and try to chase those short. Now looking at the NASDAQ market, the NASDAQ also have a few uh, consecutive down days, but today got a little bit of turnaround, got a little bit of a spinning top uh, hammer candle also. But again, looking at the uh, up-down volume ratio, even the last few days, the NASDAQ was down, the up-down volume ratio was in favor of the up volume. Okay, there were more up volume than down volume. And so you also notice that the uh, advanced decline was positive yesterday on a negative day for the NASDAQ. And today, again, it was up, uh, you know, 727 more advancing issue than declining issue. And with an up-down volume ratio in favor of the up volume, the ratio of 1.7. Now, the NASDAQ new high, new low, unlike the New York Stock Exchange, it is, uh, you know, been negative. In other words, there were more new 52-week low than 52-week high in the recent weeks. But it is getting better. Today, it's only eight more new 52-week low than 52-week high. But also, the other thing to tell is you can see that the number of new 52-week low is coming down. So that is also a little bit of a positive sign. Now, we are not seeing that positive divergence on the NASDAQ uh, AD line as we saw on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. It is still coming down with a, uh, you know, pretty much in sync, basically. Right? It's making lower high while the uh, AD line also, uh, uh, you know, making lower high. So it's pretty much in sync, but we are seeing a little bit of a negative divergence here because this is actually a more you know, lower than this uh, pivot low here, but the uh, AD, I mean the NASDAQ 100 actually closed with a uh, higher low. So we've got to be careful. The uh, NASDAQ market is not out of the wood yet. It's not as positive as the uh, New York Stock Exchange or the uh, uh, S&P 500. So it's important for everyone that is really trying to follow the market, understand the market vital signs, basically the internals, right? Just like us, we need to understand how to interpret our own vital signs, such as the temperature, the blood pressure, and the pulse, right? You know, those type of stuff that uh, will let us know, you know, if we, uh, you know, went to a certain threshold, you know, how high the temperature do we consider we're having a fever, how low of a pulse or how high of a blood pressure that we should be concerned about we might have a cardio attack or something like that, right? So it's the same thing with the market internal. We need to understand, you know, what are the signs to look for, you know, for the market to tell us that it is getting weaker or it is uh, getting stronger. Those are the stuff that we need to, uh, you know, key off when we watch the market. So let's take a look at the e-mini S&P 500, the, uh, the uh, S&P 500 futures. You can see right here, this candle here today. Yeah, I have a level here that I've been looking at after uh, the, uh, looking at the uh, 4317 area. Okay, so uh, it's sort of trying to tag that level. And this morning when I saw it turn, then basically I have covered my, uh, my short on the, uh, on the spy. Okay, so uh, here's the tweet that I uh, tweeted out earlier today. So here's a tweet that I uh, put it out last night. And uh, basically uh, this morning when the uh, market is uh, pulling back and starting to uh, show sign that it might be uh, stabilizing and also it uh, pretty much hit what I was uh, looking at by monitoring that 4317 area at the ES. So once I see that the price is uh, firming up and essentially I have, uh, I could went and close my, uh, my put spread on the spy. So what will I be uh, looking for in the coming days? I think for the ES, I essentially be monitoring this trend line here, right? To see what it continue to come up and take out these levels. 
if we could come up and take out this level here, then we could be uh, looking at the uh, that Globex all-time high be back in play. Right now, if it uh, come up and get rejected back down, then I'd be uh, looking for a uh, lower low to be uh, put on. Right then, we probably will see this uh, 4192 or near this uh, 4200 area. Okay, so we're essentially looking at this, uh, you know, this area here first is this uh, this zone, and then uh, this area here. Okay, so there is this right high volume uh, balance area here, so we could uh, be uh, looking at that. And this is the composite point of control right now is this 4192 and a quarter so it's somewhere around this 4200 area okay that's where we will look if it continues to pull back but if it pushes up then uh, look at this high volume zone here right so you can see that it uh, could chop all the way back up here essentially take out this high then all of a sudden you have a uh, you know a little bit of a uh, you know, higher high coming in right and then the higher low then you could get this reverse back up to this area here and come up to this composite value area high. Now let's take a look at some of the stock that I posted already on my Twitter account today. So the uh, first one here, let's switch over to the uh, Twitter account and take a look. So the first one here is called QuantumScape. I have no idea what it does. Okay, but I'm basically looking at the price action and it came up on one of my uh, scanner that I run to just kind of get some idea of what are some of the stock that is uh, you know come coming up and meeting some of the criteria that I uh, look for on a uh, stock for a potential swing long and this one came up so I took a look at the uh, price action a little bit and it's still kind of interesting right so like I said I have no idea uh, what this company does it just pop up on one of my scanner Okay, and I did take a long, take a long today. So we'll see. A little bit underwater right now, but we'll see. And uh, basically just trading the plan, right, based on the setup. And here, let's go and take a look at the uh, the chart here from today. So here's a daily chart. You can see that it is uh, right here, sitting at this uh, support trend line here, and it is inside of this high volume zone here. And there is this composite point of control. Right, there's a high volume no here and you see the price is actually is sitting right up there right now so i'm basically looking for this thing to move up higher and uh you know possibly get up to the uh to this high here that would be my initial target that i'm looking for and then see what it will do uh and uh, maybe it will uh, come up here to this low volume zone here okay but right now i'm basically you know playing off of this bounce from the support and it's got a nice little price action here you know maybe uh, it will get above this point of control and then push up to the uh, edge of the next uh, you know high volume uh, zone there okay the other stock that i uh, tweeted today was uh, gamestop i think gamestop might be uh getting ready to do a little bit of a squeeze here so uh, let's go and switch over to the uh, other chart to the uh, latest chart here and here's today's price action here on gamestop as you can see it came up to this trend line here why did it break out of this trend line so if it break this trend line be watching this level up here and possibly get up to this 233 level that will be a heck of a short squeeze here so keep an eye on that for that possibility in the coming days and here's a tweak on a uh, online gambling stock online betting stock draft king the DraftKings is kind of looking interesting if it break above this uh, 51 level. So let's go take a look at today's chart. So as you can see, today's chart didn't uh, change too much here. It's still uh, hovering underneath this 51. So essentially, I'm looking to see would it be able to break this 51 and possibly come up here to this 55.47 area, essentially this zone here. This right now is also uh, you know kind of bouncing off of this uh, high volume area here and also... Uh, above this composite point of control the other online gambling stock or the online betting stock is uh, uh, Penn National Gaming P-E-N-N -N. and we're saying that uh, watch this uh, you know candle here 
And we see that uh, it is kind of, you know, putting up a little bit of a shooting star. They are uh, long being trapped up here. So when price come back up here, most likely some of these week long will bail and they probably will create a little bit of a selling pressure. But if it uh, holds up, then we could see uh, Penn to uh, make its way up to possibly uh, get up to this uh, 79 area. Because again, you know, basically coming off of this uh, support area, this trend line and breaking out of this uh, descending trend line resistance. And also there's a uh, little bit of a low volume zone here. So essentially we're watching for a uh, little bit of a momentum on the upside. So let's go take a look at today's chart. So here you can see, uh, you know, after today's a uh, little bit of a uh, shooting up here uh, that trap uh, some of the uh, the longs up here. It's kind of chopping around right underneath this uh, uh, trend line here. So we're going to look for a possible breakout and uh, move about this trend line here in the coming day and see would it be able to take out this high here that would be somewhere around 75.95 so if we could take out that high then uh, we could uh, possibly see it uh, work itself up toward the 77 and possibly get up to this value area high this composite value area high at 79. the next stock is a crypto mining company hive I was saying uh, earlier during the uh, morning, uh, we saw this little bit of a hammer have a candle developing. So I'm basically saying, uh, you know, watch for the uh, hammer uh, near this support area. You see that there is this uh, uh, low uh, volume zone here and also this uh, supporting trend line. So we might see a bounce back up from this uh, trend line here. And if we go take a look at today's price action, and as you can see, it finished the day just kind of bouncing around from this zone here. We're going to be uh, watching to see would it uh, continue to pull back and get it bounced off of this trend line or would it push up above this high volume node, this composite point of control. And if it could uh, get back above this point of control, then essentially what I'm watching for is a move up toward this uh, high here. That's the uh, you know potential target that I'm watching for. So if we uh, get it to uh, come down, then watch to see if it get a bounce up here. Or if it uh, continue to move up and see would it be able to hold above this uh, point of control and push up toward this uh, 376 area, this value area high. Now let's take a look at a couple of these uh, reopening stock here. The first one is uh, Carnival uh, Corp. And essentially you're looking at a bounce off of this uh, trend line here. And I tweeted earlier uh, a few days ago about uh, CCL and essentially I kind of reiterate just uh, kind of be patient and watch the uh, price develop here to see where we get a trade. And here's what happened today. It kind of dipped below this trend line here. So we're going to watch to see what it's able to, uh, you know, hold about this composite uh, point of control and bounce back up on this trend line. Because we essentially are looking for a break above and then, uh, you know, possibly trying to get up here to this high here and eventually get up to this uh, 30 uh, level here at this zone here. You know, essentially uh, try to get up to this high volume zone, chop around and then push. And the other one that I'm looking at is Las Vegas sand here. I know it recently kind of got clobbered by the uh, clamping down of the uh, casino over at Macau and uh, uh, LVS kind of got the blunt, blunt of it on the uh, sell off. But it seems to be uh, stabilizing down here in this high volume zone here. So right now I'm basically saying I'm looking for a little bit of a pull back to this pivot high here. Essentially try to test this pivot high to uh, give a little bit of a confirmation that it is indeed breaking out of this uh, consolidation here and getting ready to uh, push up. And as you can see from today's price action, essentially just kind of got a little bit of a hangman doji here. So we're going to keep an eye on it to see what it uh, come back down to this area here and get a push because also again we have a uh, composite point of control down here at 3746. So if it could uh, stay above that then I expect it to uh, see uh, what it uh, try to move up into this uh, 42 area, this zone and then uh, we eventually try to get it back up to this trend line here and possibly uh, retest for this resistance and get a little bit of a push down. So it's a, a little bit of a, a short term or near term type of swing trade. And that's basically what I'm looking for right now. And see if we get a, uh, you know, setup to uh, take a uh, 
uh, swing up. And on Apple, I'm basically making an observation on this pullback to say, is this uh, a opportunity for the dip buyers to uh, buy the dip on Apple? Or is it going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more on the downside? So essentially, I'm looking for uh, the uh, for Apple's price action and saying that if it come down to this trend line, then I think we're going to see a little bit more uh, pullback from the S&P 500 because Apple uh, has a uh, pretty good, uh, you know, a large weight on the S&P 500 and also the Nasdaq 100. So we're going to keep an eye on uh, Apple to see uh, how it, going to do in terms of, uh, you know, finding support and bouncing back, or is it going to come down uh, to this area here near this uh, 130, uh, 135 area? So let's go and take a look at today's uh, price action. And here looking at Apple, you can see that it finished off with a, a little bit of a bearish type of hammer candle. So it is uh, close off the uh, way above the, uh, the low of the day. So that is a positive, but again, you know, it's essentially, it is essentially still on this downtrend here. So we're going to see it's, uh, if tomorrow put in an inside day, then we could see a possibility of come back down to this 137. But if it uh, break away from this uh, high, then we could see it uh, work back up to this uh, 142. And maybe in the coming days or next week, it will try to break this trend line and start reverse back up. But again, you know, if uh, Apple come down to this level here, then got to watch out for the uh, little bit more uh, pullback on the S&P 500. Okay, here's a tweak on one of the uh, stock that I have no idea <laughs> that even it, it exists. It's called Party City Holding. And it just popped up on my scanner. And basically, I'm looking at this uh, kind of interesting price action here. And there might be a possibility of a... Uh, quick swing long, you know, maybe uh, come up here and play for this uh, this high here. So let's go and take a look at today's uh, price action and see. Okay, here's a uh, closer look at the uh, price action for uh, PRTY, Party Holding, Party City Holding Company. So you can see that uh, could be a little bit of a pivot and uh, be uh, watching this high here, you know, if it come up, you know, maybe uh, it could uh, come up to this high. Right, this low volume area here, somewhere around this uh, 850 area. And it got a nice bounce off this uh, trend line here recently. You know, so it uh, came down and now it's uh, making a little bit of a pivot. So let's see what it be able to get above this, uh, you know, this pivot high here in the uh, coming day, next day or two, to see uh, what it be able to push up and at least uh, come up and tag this level. And then who knows, it might even come up to this 978 because this is the uh, composite uh, value area high. And here's the composite point of control here, this high volume node at 689. And here's another, and here's another stock that popped up on my scanner, Angie. Wow, you know, today I said basically, wow, 8% pop. You know, so uh, looking at this uh, popping up here and a little bit of a uh, consolidation area. So look for a possible, uh, your continuation and see if there's some trade location here in the coming day to maybe possibly get a quick swing long up at this high here somewhere around this $15 level. So as you can see from this uh, closing chart of Angie, you could also look at it like this, you know, maybe possibly uh, get a little flag up, you know, if it uh, could do that or might come down. But basically I'm looking for a possible consolidation, right, on this here and try to break back above for this uh, $15 level. And it's been uh, sitting here at this uh, composite point of control at $11.99. So we'll see what it will pop above this high here, today's high, and move up. Because you definitely do not want to chase a stock like Angie today when it's already up at 8%. Now, if you were able to uh, catch it down here, then it might be okay. But still, you know, you don't want to sort of anticipate anything right because right now it's pretty much down here near the uh, support area so you want to make sure that the price be able to do a little bit of a confirmation that it is ready to move and finally gold got a huge day today it was up over uh, uh 30 points matter of fact uh you know at the uh, in the morning when i took this out it was up uh 34 and a half point or so 
and basically I'm looking at this high volume developing here and usually that's an indication that you have a lot of people is pottering on going long and then eventually a lot of these short term trader when the price uh, doesn't break above the uh, you know the high for them to get paid and they start uh, you know closing out the position and that kind of start a, a little bit of a domino effect and you get what we call a liquidation break and then you get a quick sell off so looking at today's uh, rest of the uh, the day's uh, chart the rest of the session chart we did not get uh, much of a liquidation break as yet so I wouldn't be surprised to see it come uh, maybe tomorrow unless it could push us through with volume here and developing a new high volume area above and start balancing because otherwise a lot of these long going to get squeezed and uh, they're going to be uh, you know be uh, hesitant to hold the position as soon as there are sellers coming in and start selling down just probably just coming down to this low volume zone so you can see in the morning uh, it gapped up you know gold during the uh, regular hours uh, trading session the rth then you got people you know basically uh, taking profit and also shorting it down and here it built up a lot of volume down here at the low although we did not get a nice low here so that's another indication that we could see gold come back down and retest this low here because this is a, a little bit of a poor low but in any case uh, to continue on just looking at this high volume area here and you got this little bit of a you know basically a short squeeze so this right here is the opposite of this up here that we're looking for a liquidation break because you've got too many long you know short-term player uh you know uh, uh establishing long position here you got a lot of short-term players establishing short position thinking that it will go lower then as soon as you got a little bit buying pressure come in and you squeeze the short you know the weekend to come and cover and you get uh start this uh you know short squeeze and then right now when it got up here it kind of got a little liquid i mean a little bit of a consolidation and uh, additional buyers just come in and start pushing it up so then that's um, where it start start out up at this um, you know near the uh, 1797 area and right now we're basically to see would it be able to continue to break and move up above or would it come down and start uh, retracing back down here into this high volume zone and essentially clean up this poor low here so that's it for this midweek uh, video update and uh, here I just leave you with this uh, SPY, the chart for uh, the uh, ETF for the S&P 500. And you can basically go and extrapolate from my earlier discussion on the SPX, you know, the cash index, and also the E-mini S&P 500 future to kind of see some of these level here. Uh, you can see this low here, this high here. So basically we're looking at these two points. You see what it get a pivot up to put in a higher high or come down, continue the lower low. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Be sure to smash that thumbs up to help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.